today I went and brought a Topro Elite and a wiring kit. I didn't realize that you actually need a wiring, a Topro Elite or an electric brake controller in your car to have electric brakes. So I was gonna make a video of installing it. It is the Red Arc one. Um, seems to be the one everyone goes to. I've seen a different video with a nice little spot to mount this Topro. I will show you when I find that. And the extended universal wiring kit for it. So we'll get in, we'll pull a bit of the dash apart and start wiring her in. Just a hole. That just pops out. Yeah, there's a nice little spot up in the back here. So that comes down, slide it forward. Now, we'll check that again. There's actually already a hole in there. So I just hook the wires onto it just to test fit it up in there. Because we're gonna have, that will go to the actual switch. Yep, so that's gonna go that way. So there's a nice little threaded hole there. And a bolt there, bolt there. I'm gonna clip this back in so I can see what it's like room wise. Yeah, that's gonna fit in there, lovely. So we've just got this bolt up in here. We've got one through a hole that's existing. One that we're gonna have to drill out, I think. I'll give you a quick little yeah. view. But there's actually already a bracket. I'll just twist that out of the way. Just a, there is a threaded hole. I just didn't have a bolt for that threaded hole. So I'm just gonna put that in and then run all my cabling from there. The uh, Topro wiring kit, you get another one and it has a ring terminal already on your ground. Then what you get, you get your battery one that has a ring terminal already on it with a fuse. And then on the other end, it already has the clip. Let's see if it's gonna focus on that. It has the clip that you can actually plug straight into this. Um, also have cable with your blue and your red with clips already on them that will go to the back to your trailer plugs so it's pretty straightforward you just got to find spots to run through I'll show you my spots on the 79 I've already got a grommet on the back of the cab that I've got my reverse or my rear view camera running through which would be easy um, I just need to go through a firewall grommet with my battery yeah. as you can see Obviously poor quality, but that's an earth cable. So we'll take that off, put our earth to it. So to get through the firewall, I'm going to poke a screwdriver through it. And I have no tongue and groove, so I'm going to tape string line to it. Pull a couple meters of the string line out, tape the wire to that, pull the string line back through. The string line should be nice and skinny. We will go and get some string line and some tape and do that. I'll show you in a minute. String line to my screwdriver. I'll untape that, pull that through, tape this cord to it, and we'll be good to go. So we got it through. Mine, the two year old, having a tantrum just here in the background. But as you can see, I've taped the end of my string line to the cord. I poked the string line through with it and pulled it through. I'll give you a run through on where I've got all my cables running through the cars. So, this one here, I've got a cable already running through a grommet in here. Just pops in the back firewall. 
want to do it. Oh, uh, silicon it up. Um, I've just popped the door trim off. I just use a flathead screwdriver. If you just get it under there and just give it a light leaf, it pops them off. They're just little clips. Um, seat belt cover. The trick is pull it from the front because you've got more access. Once you pop this side off, it pops off the back. Run that up through here. Same thing with this one. Couple of clips. Just gently pop them up. This one here has a little bolt, plastic bolt, that goes up in there. Yep, up in there. Um, so then that way you can get everything up behind there, up in behind the, um, up behind the dash. Plug it in. So I'm trying to currently feed this cord for the little um, control, in cab control. Rather than pulling the whole dash apart, I'm just trying to shimmy it through and see if I can get it to pop out somewhere to see how far I can mount this away. I've got a couple of positions I want to try. Just depends whether or not I can get this cord over here. I'm stuck on something at the moment. So going with the dash removal part now. It's uh, been annoying. So we're gonna just remove as much as we possibly can with the dash. And there's two bowls down here. Hopefully that pulls that out. bolt and you can dead set lever that whole bottom across which made life a lot easier don't pull too hard because it will break. Okay. now that I've just got this out don't pull it too hard because it's up behind the, the head unit but those top bolts come off um, by the looks of it there's a clip here just like pressure you just pull softly until you feel it go pop don't pull too hard so you don't crease this bit. Um, now you can actually get in through here. It's a lot easier. I've got this hanging down. I can get this cable just through the back of this. Uh, we're just screwing this dash back together. Now that we've got the cable run. Trying not to damage anything. give you a run through so I've run the cable through I've plugged it in put that through your plate and then you screw that little piece onto the end which holds it to the plate if it focuses on it and you can see the little marker at the top that's set at zero because I can't turn anymore that way when I start turning this way, I got two four six eight and nice yeah. little fitment that I'll move so you can see it actually I mind it there in the center of that it's going to be hidden you're not going to see it so two four six eight ten started on zero we'll mess around once we wire the back in so we got the red arc loom all the way through comes with a handy little kit in there um, tells you on the instructions which way to go so you've got to take red and blue out. Red goes to this little um, joiner clip, however you want to put it. And then tape this blue. So factory wiring harness blue, tape it up. Just tuck it in so it's out of the way. Put the new red and blue to the trailer plugs. It tells you on your actual trailer plug which is which. The instructions tell you as well. It's pretty straightforward. Another little thing I did, Toyota actually fit their tow plug here i've knocked mine off god knows how long ago it's just been hanging actually disconnected it pulled it up through i'm going to mount it up on top of my tow bar so i don't hit it again because it's annoying when you hit it and break it it all up so i moved my trailer plug to there um instead of down here 
So now it's out of the weather and won't get hit anymore. There's actually a fuse on the back here or if it's a joiner, I'm not sure if it's a fuse actually. Oh, it might be 7 amp max. Anyway, I've zip tied that one there. So that's easy enough to get to. Zip tied that cable down. I haven't trimmed the zip ties yet. It goes up through the back of the cab there, which is great. Tidied all that up, cars back together. When you first put it in and you turn the ignition on, I'll turn it on and see if it works. It will light up blue and green. It'll flash, which is a calibration mode. It needs to calibrate which direction's forward, so you actually need a drive for the car and the unit to work out which way is forward, so it's not being silly. And then once you work that out, you can use it, which is good. I think I'm gonna run it at about, yeah, five's about halfway. I'll test it once I drive the car. Car's all back together, nice and easy. It's easier just to pull a bit of your dash out most of the time. Yes. Very, with the wiring harness, actually made it very, very easy, very simple to do. It's just the feely bits trying to get the cables through all the, behind the dash, through the firewall. But other than that, it's just plug and play. Plug in, works. Simple, very, very simple. And we tested it. The way to test it is I had my car, my trailer jacked up, had it plugged in. Had me brother in the car. I spun the wheel. Got him just to press the brakes. On zero, it just engaged very slowly. On 10, um, you could hear it bite in very, very quickly. Like as soon as you do it, the wheel just come to a stop. So that's why I want to test it, but that's how you'll make sure it's all working and it's controlled and you know working how you want. Best way to do it is obviously take it for a drive and just play around with the switch. Two modes on this. I'm gonna run with the mode with, um, can't remember which one it was. There's one where you control it from in here how hard you want, and the other one goes off the brake pedal. So the more pressure you put to the brake pedal, the more pressure it'll push to the back trailer. So that's how I'm gonna run it on that one. So I think that will be the best setting. But that's simple on this little fitting. Hope you've enjoyed that video. I hope it helps people out and makes it easier for you to do it. You might as well just, you know, trying to make videos so people can just jump in, have a go and try it themselves. That's what I'm doing. I don't know nothing. I'm not a mechanic. I'm not an auto electrician. I know nothing about it, but you get in, have a go, read the instructions and nine times out of 10, it's easier than you think.